The Skoda Superb Sportline is today in Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas today. This one here, is it really already a superb RS maybe? Because the Sportline with sporty exterior and interior here in combination today with the 280 horsepower engine is probably the setup that it comes closest to a real RS version. There's no official one yet. We're going to find out and talk everything through about in general the Superb here in the Combi version today, the Estate version and of course special here, what is special with the Sportline that is newly available. We're going to experience that together in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Talking about prices first, if you just round the price, a basic Superb starts at about 25,000 euros, including VAT. Then the Sportline starts at about 35,000 because it's already combined with the bigger engine. And then if you pick the biggest engine, we'll soon show you, then it's about 45,000. And of course, that's almost double the price of the base price, but still relatively cheap and affordable if you compare other cars, which have the same length, the same room on the inside and the same quality for example. So this one here can really compete with some other way more expensive cars I can tell you. In the front we got this very sharp design from a Czech handcraft style with those glass work on the inside. However it's bike salon lights with LED daytime running lights and um, I expect them to offer full LED also maybe with the matrix technology um, at some point with some of the next facelifts. The Sportland has stronger lower bumpers here and um, it has this comp structure grille so a little sporty experience and also a black frame here around the front grille. So even a little sportier appearance than the normal Superb already has and this one has attracted a lot of customers already to this very car. 4 meters 85 or 15 foot 9 is the total length of the Skoda Superb, both in the sedan, which has this fastback style, and also here in the Combi in the estate version. Then the Sportline comes here with black contrast. You can see here I <laughs> activated the, uh, the keyless entry function here, just with you know touching the, the door handle. It's really interesting. Then we have those black frames around the windows to have the sportier style and also the black contrast at the side bumpers. Also the side bumpers are stronger here in the Sportline. Usually a Superb comes standard with 16 inch alloys, um, then you upgrade them a little bit. Then for the Sport you get 19 usually, but here we still have the winter tires model, probably one of the latest uh, or last vehicles this year with winter tires. They are an 18 inch, but I think always sufficient. The winter tires are of course a little bit thicker, but I good two color scheme style, I think very attractive and a Sportline badge right there. So overall with a sharp design as above the door handles, here by the way you can open the car again then, there are also the mirrors flip up. Black roof rails with the Combi too and overall I think it's a simplistic design, not too joyful but really sharp and elegant. I think that's also the success rate of this car. And if you compare the length of the car here, you're already basically in the upper mid-size segment. So, you know, BMW 5 Series, Mercedes E-Class, towards, heading towards those. Um, so a little bit longer also than the Volkswagen Passat, for example, which have a lot of similarities. So um, this car here, if you want to say, you know, I want to more go in the direction of understatement, then it can actually be a cheap alternative also to one of those premium hitters. We will see in the interior, <laughs> the car closing, see in the interior if this really will play out from the premium approach too. What do you think about the exterior? Tail lights come from LED technology from standard equipment and also in this sharp design, so very well done here too. The sport line has let's say a kind of diffuser here, a stronger lower part and also we have those exhaust pipes. The outer part is just for design, there are two pipes each on both sides but there's a very good transition between both actually so I think it's um, basically, basically fine. 
By the way, um, if you just take a look at the Sportline additional price for the exterior and interior parts, we will soon show you. It's about just 3,000 euros for this design package if you compare it with the same engine without a Sportline. Engines, you can get a 2 liter TDI basically for the Superb, then petrol, turbo petrol 1.4, 1.8, and the 2 liter TSI. 2 liter TSI here with 280 horsepower, maximum setup 5.8 seconds, 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That's the acceleration figure. And it's always combined with the all wheel drive, so that's the Haldex front plus rear, maximum 50% distribution to the rear, then, you know, adaptive. And in general, the bigger engines come automatically with the all-wheel drive. The, let's say, mid-term engines, they have optional all-wheel drive. And the end entry-level engines, they are front-wheel drive only. General six-speed manual or a seven-speed DSG. And some others have six-speed DSG. So here, both are actually available. This one here with a seven-speed DSG. And this is the most powerful engine yet, which is available here. And of course, we are going to try to have a lot of fun with it in the driving part. Key with a little bit of chrome, why not? And then of course keyless entry is possible here and then also the side mirror slip up. So door closing sound and on the interior, sporty setup here with the sport line, with a lot of Alcantara being used, I love that. Then the plastics here also in a soft, soft touch style. So a good build quality also here with a solid door opening. Then some bottles here you can fit in the inside of the door. Also there's a small trash bin, <laughs> it's a funny feature. Superb entry logo there. And then this is the highlight of this sport line. you got the full Alcantara seats with a little bit of leather red on the outside, but look how much room they offer. And still side support and the great soft surface, not getting too warm in summer and not getting too cold in winter. Really recommend to go for the sport line just because of the seats, that would be the main argument already. Then also the Steering wheel, unfortunately that is not available on Alcantara yet, that would be great, uh, even flat bottom, that is good sport, the handling and the gauges, you can see this does not fit that much then to the rest of the style because those ones are rather, you know, in this um, vintage look. I think the sportier uh, style would have been better in this case. And let's get inside. And indeed, those seats offer you a great seating comfort, so they're sporty and comfortable at the same time. The integrated head restraint is also high enough, so with other Superb modes I've already realized that sometimes the head restraint is not that high, actually. The seat, by the way, with electric, um, uh, electric functions here, so that's also not quite often that all of the seats surfaces are connected with that. Here it is. And you also have a memory function for three memory positions. If you have three drivers here, for example, the cockpit is rather conservative in general, horizontal lines, again here, soft touch. Then we got uh, this car. It's not really carbon fiber, but it's a carbon fiber style. I would call it that way with the Sportline logo um, as a design element here again, this is a soft touch, this is the only hard plastic function. A lot of room here, also right there, cooled dash, um, cooled glove box. Then the um, optional biggest GPS or infotainment system is mounted in here, but this thing is very well integrated from the style. They weren't as daring from the design on the inside as they were on the exterior. That's one thing. I think they could be a little sportier here, not only with the seats. Well, there's also the aluminum pedals and stuff, um, but maybe a little sportier element here and there would have been nice for the sport. But already, I mean, it's a flawless interior, high build quality, no matter what you flip, switch, um, everything is really fixedly attached and from a good quality All already here. See it here, this is even with a soft um, surface. So when you hit your knees here, it's not that hard. 
so I think just uh, such a great job also in the interior. The rear mirror also frameless by the way, it's another good design element. Steel room you can adjust manual and also you know very wide variety of choices so you can really set it up and uh, if you put the seat all the way down, I'm um, one means 86 or six foot one, then still a lot of headroom left. So one of the best vehicles for tall drivers too. Very shoulders right there. Um, hmm, they're not adaptive, but they have those three different holes. So I'm not sure if that's the best solution, but that's the way it is here. Then a really thick armrest with a lot of room on, on the inside here with another space strange one i'm not sure what's that for and can be cooled again so nice function to keep for example some beverage or whatever um, some food cool for example then the middle console part this one it looks good in the shiny black but you see fingerprints collecting and maybe also some scratches automatic handbrake then driving mode selector will be right here you can go normal and sport one so we talk more about that when we drive the car then the dsg shifting lever you can just pull it back it's a handy solution and finally the ac unit this is classic control just as we know from very uh, very much other volkswagen or skoda cars but i think all very simple layout you can sit down in this car and immediately know where is which function and this one here you can slide open for example for garage people or also it's a symbol for the inductive charging of your phone if that's um, available for yours for a power supply and the usb port just the only one we have here maybe a second usb port would have been handy in the front here at least infotainment system in detail here smart link would be connecting your phone via cable with a smartphone mirroring function then you can scroll around like this or also use the knob so a redundant function telephone can also be connected via bluetooth i usually prefer that way to connect it just via bluetooth if you go to a vehicle then um, you can also have the those sport view with the g meter as you know from a former porsche for example or also the turbo pressure bar and the power output this is exclusive to the sport line for example and finally the gps very well to control good reaction times you can zoom in and out like this or also again here with the knob so that is when when driving you know to control it better overall i'm really satisfied with the system the size is also perfectly fine um, also with the proximity sensor here in the rear the it's a jedi function you know buttons appear they will there it is so um, and still with uh, with hard knobbins and uh, hard buttons here and i think maybe some might even prefer that uh, to the very new solutions where you have no buttons at all let's get in the rear compartment and this is the real strength of the superb because even if you have the driver's seat for a tall driver look at that so much knee room here and also headroom you could even go for a panoramic roof and still would fit 190 or 6 for two people here in the rear so this is really best in segment i would say and probably even better than some of the cars a segment above and truly a luxury feature um, and also very nice they done also the Alcantara seats here in the rear iso fix for two child seats on the outer seats that's no problem and here we have a special setup here with a with a Skoda pen holder in the rear also with a um, mobile phone holder so you can put your mobile phone in here you know as a cheap rear infotainment uh, entertainment system solution however you can also remove it and then just fold this one back again so this is both possible and you know if you want to use a ski hatch you can also open it from here and then reach through the rear or if you're driving maybe and your children forgot something in the backpack <laughs> in the trunk also a good solution because then you don't have it like papa could you please stop again i forgot uh, something in the rear ah, just use a ski hatch here <laughs> so that's also possible and besides that um, you can also order a three zone ac so you can adjust the temperature here in the rear and then also here there's a power plug 
Um, it's a little bit narrow, which is a little, you know, banging <laughs> there. You can actually fit uh, a MacBook power supply in there, but just, you know, it's really hard to do it. And here is also the second USB supply. So, let's see, electric hash here. And then, wow, I mean, this is class leading for sure. And you can see the cover here, it slides automatically one step open. This would be the full cover, then you just have to press. Good solution with the rails at the side. Then a lot of clever solutions here too, because for example here there's a, there's a small flashlight. You can use it like this or just as an integrated light. Then you can also open those side parts, uh, for example here for a net, and you can secure your luggage. Um, you can also flip the seats right there. Um, I will explain you why they do not flip automatically here. In this case, here for, for example the first aid kit, some more storage space and another flipping mechanism. And now you see I can help it and then they, they flip. And usually if you do not have this optional net mounted, they would also flip automatically um, in, at, the, at the very first. But um, in this case, we have the optional equipment, for example, for a further luggage, um, you know, um, security or let's say maybe for a dog. Because here at the rear of the seats, we got this net here mounted. And um, this can be handy. Some people really like to have this one here. Um, you know, this can come handy for some herb <laughs> when you have a dog or when, when you want to um, secure you know, uh, some, some stuff which is really, um, uh, you know, put up way high in, in, in the back. And uh, yeah, I'm behind bars now basically. And when this is here mounted at the back of the seats, they do not flip so well from the rear. But if you wouldn't have it and then you um, use the flipping mechanism, they fold down automatically. So I probably wouldn't use that one here. Just um, leave it out then. Um, and you know, then the seats also flip very well. And uh, you've seen that when they are flipped, you have even more space. And this is really superb. 2000 liters is the maximum you, you can get with the, the combi. You can also put the head restraints a little bit higher. And then the seats flip a little bit lower here too. So if you release them, oh, come on, like this, you see, go a little bit flatter, there's also ski hatch available. And this part here, again, you can remove that, you do not have to have it. And this is again here for, for the net that can be um, pulled out. And there you see, it goes all the way to the front. When you have the electric seats, you cannot flip the front seat though. That is one um, disadvantage of having the electric seats. Well, so it's such a big clip here with the trunk because you can show so much here. Again, some more space this is to make the area even, to make it flat. And you can also put it like this, it's a handy solution. And then even more below that, you have the spare tire. So now I think we've, well, not, not close, not, not quite. Well, there's one more feature we can show you. That is children's safety. Um, and I know some of the Volkswagen models they use, yeah, and here again, too much torque. They should look at, uh, for example, the Mercedes E-Class T model. They are more sensitive for the electric mechanism. Here again, too much torque being used, but everything else, really such a well usable car, especially here in the estate, the Combi version. Welcome to the driving part and we start here at the red traffic light They go to the S mode, the RPMs preload a little bit. I can also go in the, another driving mode from normal to sport. That optimizes everything for sporty driving, also for example steering wheel and throttle input and stuff. And the S mode then is for the shifting that the gears are shifted up later and shifted down earlier. And as this one here is the sport line with the 280 horsepower engine, two liter of displacement. Interesting. Car went out. Anyway, let's go. No, 
nice. So, well, this Porsche or whatever it is behind it didn't also not expect that. So who would expect that from a Skoda? Wow, some really nice agile stuff. I mean, the acceleration figure is 5.8 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That is really impressive. So, why not? I mean, acceleration-wise, this feels like a Skoda Superb RS, even though it's, you know, at some time maybe they, they upgrade the horsepower figure and then make a real RS. But so far, it's the sport line. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what, uh, what happened before the acceleration that was pretty interesting because I deactivated the start-stop function. But it's... Oh, wait, no. Ah, sorry, my mistake. There are two A symbols in the middle console and one of the A symbol is for the automatic parking brake and the other A symbol is for automatic start-stop-off. Now I hit the right run. So my bad. <laughs> that was really Porsche Mark and we we let there at the traffic light. <laughs> Why not? So this is the first acceleration test and well at the same time when you're here on the motorway, the car is so comfortable in every respect. Sound insulation is good, those seats are a dream to sit on, also on long term run. The car behaves due to the long wheelbase so calm. It's one of the you know Calmest cars on the road as for the riding sovereignty, and you can definitely say this is not only mid size segment, this can be really accounted for the upper mid size segment. So, you know, as this car was presented at the world premiere in 2015, there were people commenting, oh, I'm BMW 5 series drive, and really considered buying a Skoda Superb now because I like the design so much. And everyone was first saying, What is going on? And meanwhile, I can really understand that um, because from the driving feeling, how, how sovereign the car feels, how superb in, indeed, how easy it is to drive and how relaxing, you can really compare it to cars like a BMW 5 Series or Mercedes E-Class. You can really say that. The big difference is just that you save a lot, a lot of money if you compare it. Here, the Sportline, however, is not so cheap, for sure, as I said earlier, so double the price, almost at the base price. Still, it will be way cheaper than an E-Class or a 5 Series or an Audi A6. So, I uh, was here in the Sport mode on the motorway, it's quite helpful when accelerating, but here now in city, riding 50, you hear it maybe, I'm going over 3000 RPMs, not so pleasant, not so relaxing, so I take the shifting lever back to the D mode again, and the shifting process is being altered car shifts up in the fourth gear and we are below 2000 rpm that's more relaxing for the city ride the driving mode selector well i can go to the eco mode for example then you see what happened there the rpm dropped down and this is also i have also this eco circle now this is the sailing function so the car and now see i hit the brakes and the engine is working more again. Very interesting. So the sailing or coasting function, this really saves you fuel because it would be like, um, you know, putting in neutral, for example, the car can run freely, but it consumes less fuel than you would be in neutral. So very useful function if you combine it here with, with a seven speed DSG. So now again, there again, you see? I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera angle can you well maybe not but I can tell you then so the um, the needle for the RPM is dropping as soon as I leave off the of the throttle and that induces the sailing function so being in this eco mode is very relaxing to drive because you can really let the car roll normal or comfort would be then uh, not so stressed on the consumption basically it's really just normal um, and the sport mode, which we were in, you can feel it already that the RPMs are going a little bit higher. Then again, you can stress it with going to the S mode with the shifting lever. And also in the sport mode, the steering wheel is supposed to be a little bit harder. Yeah, it's actually true. 
yeah, you can feel it. So in the comfort mode, it's really light to, to control. And when you're in sport mode, you get a little bit more feedback than from the steering wheel. That's really interesting. So you can adjust it. In general, the steering wheel is fairly easy to control, but still it doesn't have a very unnatural feeling. It feels still good. Um, for some, it might be a little bit too loose, but then again, if you go to the sport mode, or you can also have this individual mode where you can just, uh, for example, only adjust the, the, the strength of the steering wheel, so you have a free choice. I really enjoy the sporty elements of this car, for example, also the, the Alcantara seats, so they you know, really keep me tight on the road, although they offer a lot of room, so good long-term comfort. The only thing I've mentioned earlier in the interior part too, you know, when I'm in a sporty car, I want to see some sporty gauges. And those ones still have those, you know, old school style or vintage style. So what I want to test is when I'm going from normal to sport mode, does the car already go into the S mode for shifting? Like I would put back the shifting lever because um, we had some cars like the, the Mini Countryman, John Cooper Works, Jaguar, Jaguar F-Pace, where you have to do that separately. At Audi, for example, they usually combine it when you go into the dynamic mode. Already the S-shifting mode is activated. Let's see what's happening here again. Yes, exactly. So when you're going to the sport driving mode, also the shifting lever is activated. So basically as you would pull it back. And I think that's a very useful function because if you want to go to the dynamic mode, you really want to have that, have that tool. So I don't understand it when manufacturers do not combine it actually. So here it's a very useful function. However, from the um, other settings, you don't feel too much difference. What you feel a little bit that here in the superb sport line, the suspension is 10 millimeters lower. So that's a slight difference. So you do have a sportier riding feeling than with a normal superb version. It's also supposed to be the steering wheel is a little bit more progressive even. Is that the case? Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, um, but not too much of a difference actually. Consumption wise, if you're driving rather calmly, by the way, you can score something between nine and 10 liters on 100 kilometers. I mean, for 280 horsepower, that's fairly okay. It should be a little bit lower if you do not hammer the throttle. But we know the Volkswagen AG engines, they are very good for the riding comfort, for refinement. They are silent when you ride the car slowly. They have great performance, but at the same time, they often have a little too high consumption. So now we're getting back to the motorway again. By the way, we're in a normal mode. Good reaction from the car. Although we have a long wheelbase, it feels pretty agile. You do feel you have, you know, a length of almost five meters, um, but it's not that it would hinder you in any kind. So now if we, for example, go, we go back to the sport mode, and 70 kilometers an hour to 100, let's go. 105 already, wow. Now you see, especially when you're in the sport mode, you get an immediate reaction from the car. Let's see if it's different in the normal mode. I guess the, yeah, goes to the fifth gear. Now the car will have um, a kick down first to, um, you know, to have a better reaction. Let's go now 85 to 100. Well, even in the normal mode, pretty, pretty fast reaction from the DSG. So that DSG, the dual clutch transmission, is doing a very good job here. So, I mean, we had some cars already from an automatic transmission, especially when they were in these normal driving modes. They took a lot of time for this kick down, for the downshift, but here, very fast reaction. I like that. You can also put the shifting lever to the right side, by the way, and then shift the manuals, shift the manual gear by the shifting lever, putting it front or back. And you can also use shifting pedals right here. So you have a lot of flexibility. You can control this car in many different ways. And so you can just pick your favorite one. Flawless are the assistant systems. 
I can put in the optional ACC adaptive cruise control and the distance to the car in front of me is being kept or just the speed if there's no one in front of me and it's pretty relaxing and it's also reducing the speed until zero. Also the automatic emergency brake comes with standard equipment, we really like that, that's great. Another good optional feature is the blind spot monitor here, it's flashing and as soon as I, sorry it's um, appearing, the light is appearing and then I um, intentionally hit the turning indicator. So when I hit the turning indicator and the car says, oh he really wants to change the lane now, then the light is not only appearing but also flashing as, a, as an additional warning saying you really should not switch the lane. So it is good that Skoda can really get all the parts from the Volkswagen parts bin as for the assistance systems for example because it really shows you know they work really perfectly so and that's that's really good. We had it um, recently also that we had some cars where you know the systems were not that evolved but here it's good to know that all of those systems are really working very very well. So th this one here is one of the best autobahn cars to me and especially considering the price because a lot of times on Autobefuel we have also expensive cars and we say oh you know great driving characteristics and so on but some that's not you know when you have a car for 100,000 euros it has to be good at some point you know but I think the even more interesting approach is having a car that is achievable in price and yeah the Sportline you can argue it's expensive but you can still get a superb at about 25,000 euros and it will still have the basic same riding characteristics as we're showing you today. And that is something that is impressive. So here just cruising at 100 kilometers an hour or 60, 62 miles an hour, so relaxing, I don't have to raise my voice. The suspension is doing a great job, I think they found a good compromise. An RS suspension would indeed be a little bit stiffer, so in this case maybe it's not a superb RS. Um, but it would be a per perfect superb RS for me because you know um, you're not riding sporty like in every second. Sometimes you more profit from that um, if it's you know a little bit more comfortable. Let's go to the sport mode again, showing you another acceleration. Of course, we have freeway now, also in the higher speeds. Let's go from 80 and then hammer it through. That's 200, wow. I mean, that's really great performance for such a car. And even here at the very high speed, I just let the car roll out again now. The car feels so safe and secure. And sound insulation also very well. And see here when I switch the lanes, for example, again, a direct response from the steering wheel. car feels really great for especially for the motorway part so and suspension wise yeah it is a little bit stiffer than the normal superb but still I think in a very good region because if you buy such a car there's no use that you get lower back pain because the setup is, is probably too sporty. Visibility by the way especially in the combi in the estate version is good to the rear also with you to this uh, frameless mirror. Now just cruise control 80. And when we look to the sides, also due to the rather steep windows and the pillars are not too thick. A pillar, B pillar, not too thick. So you have a good visibility all around. And that also um, evens out possible disadvantages uh, due to the car being rather long. So that is also one crucial fact when driving it in the city you don't feel annoyed by the size of the car because it's still very well maneuverable. Of course you always find parking, parking spot better when with small cars, yes of course, and especially for city purposes small cars are generally better, but you know some people need a lot of room, especially in the rear here, and that's good to know that you can very well manage the car. Here when it's dark you can also see the red ambient light which we have picked. Um, there are also different, uh, different other ambient light uh, colors available. Um, let's see, I can also show you for example when it's blue. There we go, in blue or in green. 
but I picked red today here because that was really suitable to the exterior color of the car and I really like this red color we have on the car here. So in yeah, Michel too. I don't know. You know, I'm I'm more into Thomas Blue cars. You know, <laughs> obligation for my name. But Michel is more into the the red. You know, also the Audi red with red, really really strong red colors. And but I mean, red and blue is both fine. So probably we need two cars for shooting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so so many um, driving features. The superb is really superb. Um, what is still on my wish list? Yeah, I mean, the, the gauges I mentioned. Um, the steering, in I think in the Octavia, especially in the RS, it's a little bit more direct. So maybe the steering here also in the Superb, a little bit more direct. They did it intentionally to have the Superb more, you know, the Sovereign relaxed car, but especially here in the Sport line, um, I would have wished the setup even maybe just a slightly bit more direct. Suspension wise to me is perfectly fine. Some others might say, you know, when I'm buying a sport line, then maybe make the suspension even a little bit stiffer. But to me it's perfectly fine. And everything else, electronic adjustment of the seats, and very important, electronic adjustment also possible with those Alcantara seats. Quite often only in the you know super drop animal skin trim level, they put then the electric controls for the seats, but here we do already have them. Oh yeah, Alcantara steering wheel, for example, or leather red steering wheel. That's maybe something I would also wish, but then um, this car uh, leaves so little wishes open because you can also do everything with it. Um, even if we all would have more passengers with us now, we would probably also be very happy. And there's so, so much luggage inside and uh, a large luggage space inside here, 2,000 liters for the for the combi. Yeah, you maybe heard at the very first acceleration today, all of the luggage was flying uh, to the rear. So uh, the biggest problem here with the luggage compartment is securing the luggage because it's so wide that everything also while driving can fly around. So maybe um, a net or something would be a, a good additional uh, part you can you can order, for example. So, really enjoyed riding this car here, and yes, I do say riding from time to time. I come from, uh, I'm, I'm usually actually more a motorcycle driver. I, you know, I started with 13, 12 or 13 years with motocross, but um, I think you can also say riding a car, why not? Someone say, oh, that's bad English. I, I just say, you know, you have to live with it. <laughs> and we can, of course, also drive, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Evil Thomas refuses to speak proper English. <laughs> Too bad. Lights, by the way, is a bike Xenon with LED daytime running lights. That could also maybe be something some people would wish to see full LED on the uh, on Superb. I'm pretty sure they will um, introduce those in the next facelift of a Superb. I'm pretty sure they'll do that. Yeah, so many great things to say about this car. Very little flaws, and that's the same tire. That's the same thing for the driving. And I hope you also enjoyed this time a more sporty approach for the superb. And we end our review, our driving part review, with another acceleration for the sport line. Let's go. And now to our conclusion for today, Skoda Superb Sportline. I mean, basically in every respect, this car is really superb. Um, I mean, the exterior, no doubt, everyone was really the same opinion of that. It's just a very beautiful car with those sharp design lines. The interior really refined, a high build quality, especially here in the Sportline. We have the great Alcantara seats. That's really the right direction and probably not probably, definitely the variant I would really go for, so I can really recommend you that. Engine-wise, you can also go with a lower horsepower spec one. This one here, of course, the one with the best performance for also fun driving, but you will also be just fine 
with, for example, a 150 horsepower engine with this car because it's not too heavy actually. But it has heavy load space. I mean, there's hardly any other car which offers so much room for this length here and it's really better than other cars that are maybe even 20 centimeters longer so this is really a unique feature of the Superb. I mean we just have had just little little points where we say yeah this could maybe be improved just a little bit for the LED lights, um, sportier gauges, something like this but I mean everything else this is one of the cars you can hardly complain anything about and the most important thing is in comparison to other cars where you can really compare it to, it is really way cheaper. So this is definitely one of the cars with the best price performance ratio on the market. And um, therefore, overall, I mean, that was already clear at the re recent reviews on the Superb. It is one of those cars we can recommend best in general at the moment because it has really this great price performance value. And I think it's also one of the key success factors why this car is really also a bestseller at Skoda right now. I want to hear your opinion, also what you think about if there should be a real RS version on the top here with the Superb, what you think about the new Sportline. Tell me that everything in the comments right there and also tune in to the next Autogefuel episode.